pretty much right in the middle of your Bible. Psalm 119, starting with verse 11, which will be the text down through verse 16. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, and as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. The most famous passage there is the text verse 11, I guess, the hiding God's word in our heart. And I challenge us as, as adults to do that. We get on to kids about Bible memory and this and that, but we as, I believe we as adults need to memorize the Bible too. Because it's not, it's not impossible. We'd like to think it, it is, but it's not impossible that somebody might come knocking on our door one day, not after our guns, but after our Bibles. Um, you hear a lot of stuff. I get stuff every week about our nonprofit status, and it's going to put churches out of business if if they lose their nonprofit status for sure. So uh, we need to pray about things. If I were to ask you what the most attractive thing in our building this morning is, what would you say? Myself. Yourself? <laughs> no conceit in his family. He's got it all. <laughs> most attractive thing in the building. The cross. The cross, for sure. You know, I enjoy, I enjoy the cross. I remember back whenever we were taping for COVID, I got to run the camera one time, and Keith was singing um, "Mercy Walked In," I think. And uh, I figured out a way to move it up and down on the cross in his face, and it just, just, just put the cross there and brought it back down. It was really, really effective. The cross. Really does make the difference. It really does. Um, some people would say it's our ladies. We have some fine-looking ladies this morning. Just some fine-looking ladies. Some are borderline, but some are fine. Some would say it's our gentlemen. Becky raised her Bible up. That's that's a, definitely an attractive thing for sure. Um, matter of fact, that's where I was headed. The most marvelous book that we can have in our houses is the Word of God. It's always the same. You pick it up, it always reads the same. But it never says the same thing. Um, a person can come to church can come to this church every Sunday. You can get saved. You can grow in grace. You can mean something for God. And it's all part of this book, the marvelous book of God. We, um, we have um, encountered a place in our lives where the government is trying to do things to make our lives better, make our lives easier. Mr. Highfalutin Doctor will come across the stage and he'll say, well, society's biggest problem is the environment. You make the environment better, and man's going to be better. They say you clean up the slums, you build a nice new apartment buildings, you put nice houses in, and soon you'll find that the, envir that, that the environment has changed the people. Well, I, I don't know about that. If, you're, if you live in the area, we've, we've just closed up in Hagerstown, we just closed up one giant complex and just opened up a new complex in Hagerstown's West End and we'll see what it's going to be like soon. But I contend that slums don't cause sin. Listen to me now. Slums don't cause sin. Sin causes slums. And ghettos don't cause sin. Sin causes ghettos. We'll soon find out that poverty doesn't come from sin or doesn't come from anything but, li but sin living in our lives. Us choosing to, to, to live a certain way, a lifestyle. We, we are at some time, we're at the same time, we hear all these 
people march across Fox News and across that Newscape or whatever, Newsmax or Newsmax, I think it is. And uh, I, I'm surprised I watch Newsmax. I, I sort of like it. I, 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 I like Fox too, but of course, a lot of the people on Newsmax are the people that left Fox and are going to Newsmax now. But, but anyhow, anyhow, the same time we're worrying about these things, these experts are saying, well, the, envir the environmental improvements we're making is going to change the, the way we live. Is it now? You clean up a place and make it look right and people act different. Think a minute. Where was the first sin ever recorded in the Bible? In heaven. The first sin ever recorded in the book in the Bible was in heaven when you remember Lucifer got all proud. He got all high and mighty and got cocked out his chest and said, well, I'm something, something. Now I'll show you what's what. I'm going to be like God. God said, no, you're not. And I'm making a place for you right now. It's a holding place. You're going to be there forever. That's how hell was. That's why hell was created. I tell people all the time when I'm talking to them about the Lord, hell's not, hell wasn't created for one human being, not one. Hell was created for the devil and the angels that, that decided. Aren't you, don't, you, don't you think those angels are sad that they decided to follow Lucifer when they did? He popped out his chest and promised them all these things. It's like your, like your boss promising all these things and not following through with it. We'll give you this, we'll give you that until they sign your name and then they don't give you anything. I'll give you all this, says, says old Lucifer, says the old devil, says old smutty face. My name's smutty face. I can do whatever I want to do. I'll, show, I'll, I'll give you all, all, all you want until you get there. Then you get nothing. But in heaven, there's no, there's no ghettos, no slums, no poverty. They don't know what ERA issues are. are. There's no ERA issues. No race problems. Everything's beautiful. There's no hunger. There's no needs. Well, in heaven, there's not even any wants. And still, in heaven, sin raised its ugly face. In heaven. Now, think about the first place on earth. Brother Jeff, don't say anything. Think about the first place on earth. Every time he opens his mouth, he gets in trouble. He says something he shouldn't say. <laughs> but he was the only one who got the, got the right answer the first time. On earth, the first place where sin was recorded was where? In the garden. Again, there's no slums. There's no sin. There was no, there was no um, race relationships, except good ones. There wasn't any issues, wasn't any problems. And sin again raised its ugly head. These folks... This might be the last message I ever preach here. I don't know. Must, next one might be from the detention center. These folks like Ocasio Cortez, promising this and promising that, all these things that, that are going on, changing the environment, doing things that they are thinking are going to change the environment. How's that going? How's that working out so far? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll put this, uh, what's she call it, the, the, um, now you can open your mouth, Jeff, if you want to, um, the Green New Deal. We'll promise you all this stuff. Give you everything. Well, shoot, you won't even have to work. Sounds like a winner to me. President and Congress stopping they, they, they're, they're not drilling for um, natural gas anymore, the fracking thing. Putting the coal ministry out of business, putting the, coal, the, uh, the oil business out of business. And I contend that as bad as the ghetto is, as bad as the ghetto is, as bad as the slums are, our Congress is just that bad of shape.
Our Congress is just as dirty as, as, as it's ever been. They're saying that in the next 10 years, the ball that we live on will be gone as we know it. Well, it may be, but it's not going to be any one person to do it, that's for sure. I know the guy. I personally know the guy. I just talked to him just a couple minutes ago. I personally know the guy that controls the ball that we live on. How fast it goes, how slow it goes, when it changes seasons, who lives and who doesn't. I know the guy, I know the guy personally. And I think most of us in here do also. And he doesn't live in New York. Get an education. Just get an education is all you have to do. Give people $15 an hour to stay home and do nothing. Guess what they're going to do? Nothing. They'll do nothing. We get all upset. We get our feathers ruffled because we killed a snapping turtle's habitat out in California somewhere. Yet unborn babies are put to death every day and they call it legal. <laughs> Man, we even pay for it. We even pay for it. I've said all along, and I believe it to be true this morning with, with, the, with the people that we have in here this morning. You give us Christians, with those, that, the, with those of us that are here right now, you give us the power to change the world the way that, God, the way that God wants the world changed, and we can change it. We can make a difference. No matter what the White House says, no matter what the, the courthouse says. You give us the opportunity to clean it up, and I believe it will be cleaned up based on the authority of the Word of God. I'm saying, you can, go, you can leave this place this morning, and I guarantee you, you can go to the, to the areas that there are less Bibles in schools, and there are some, I was surprised. I went to, uh, I stopped the other week to, um, well, it was a personal reason I stopped. I ain't going to tell you what it was to use a little room in the schoolhouse. And when I was walking in, it was public school, told them I was there, and I was actually there for something else too, but as I walked down the hallway, I saw a Bible laying on the table in the, in the public school hallway. I thought, uh, well, maybe there is some hope yet. Maybe there is some hope yet. Give us the opportunity to clean it up, and we can clean it up as, as God's people for sure. I'm saying... From here, we can go into an area where, where people live that, are, that, that, love the, that love the Bible less, and those places are slums. Those places are ghettos. I can show you, take you not too far from here, where people don't attend, the, the, the church attendance is down, the Sunday school attendance is down, all over the place, and the, the, the place is not what it needs to be for God. The social standing is different. But our elected officials are trying to clean it up. They're trying to use manuscripts to clean it up. Don't take me wrong. I'm not against cleaning the environment. But it's not the environment that needs change. It's man's heart that needs change. It's that heart that beats inside of us that needs to be changed. It needs to be reprogrammed. It, re it needs to be, what's the Bible call it? Oh, yeah, he calls it being born again. You see, we're, whenever we were born the first time, we got genes. The, son, the, the, uh, the junior church kid said, jeans? I still got jeans. I got holes in mine. Not the kind of jeans I mean. Who's, who was telling me this morning? Lincoln. Come on, he said, I got a new pair of pants on. Does he have a new pair of pants on? It's hand-me-downs. He said, I got a new pair of pants on, but I got a hole in my knee. I said, you're lit, that, 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 you're, you're proved. You're all right. That's the, only, that's the only place you got a hole in here, all right. But we, we, think, we think if we straighten up things around us, and I'm not against straightening up things around us. I'm not against the environment being good. I'm not saying we let the, thing, let the place go to trash. I'm not saying that at all. But we put all this money and all these resources, $29 trillion we're going into debt in 10 years. And what's going to be the difference when it's ending? Nothing, because our heart's still going to be the same. 
What we need, I've said thousands of times, I always catch gruff from it from somebody across the country. I always get some text back, so I'll get some more today, I guess. Well, what's more important, I think, than, than the right person in the, right ha in the White House are the right people in the church house. You get, you get the right people in the church house going out into the highways, going out into the hedges, and compelling folks to come in, it makes a, it makes a, a, a tremendous difference. Um, and I'm not against giving people something to eat. I'm not against giving people clothes to wear. I'm not against fixing up their houses and making them, making them better. I'm not... I'm not against any of that at all, unless it's at the, at the expense of filling their belly and letting their soul die and go to hell. I think we need, more, we need to be more impressed with places that are, that are uh, building up souls and building up win, winning souls and doing the things that we need to do for God, and less, in, less impressed about, well, I fed two, two, uh, two uh, mission men this morning. That, that's okay. That's fine. But let's worry about their soul. Let's worry about their soul. Um, I talked to a preacher friend this week and I used friend uh, not very wisely sometimes but he said we've gotten away from using the Bible in our church so we don't use the Bible anymore we use a what he called a a, um, a manuscript we use a manuscript now from the denomination. They send us every week to what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to preach and this and that. And I said, are you still there? Good, good, good man. He said, yeah, I'm still here. I said, well, how do you like it? He said, I, I, don't, I don't like it too well, but I said, what you all do is close the church door then. If you're not preaching the Word of God and you're not using the Word of God the way it's supposed to be written, the way it's supposed to be preached, just close the church door. Send them to Pinesburg. We'll take them. You say, that's, you say that's proselyting. No, you don't proselyte people that don't preach the Bible. You don't proselyte people that won't live for the Word of God. Until man's heart is right, I don't care if you live in California, or if you live in Pinesburg, or if you live in Cozy Town, or wherever you might live. I guess it's not Cozy Town where you live, is it? Greencastle address is it? Nova. Nova. Everybody knows where Nova is. Anybody know where Nova is? I, yeah, I, I, I'm surprised just about everybody does. <laughs> we hear the scanner going off all the time for the Taylor residents in Nova. <laughs> Kids screaming all over the place. Somebody thinks they're getting killed. There's just another kid in the neighborhood. But we, um, we, 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 worry about, we worry about this, we worry about that. Well, what we need to re be worried about is that heart that beats inside of us and the heart that beats, that beats inside of you. Are we really concerned about what, what's going on in our neighborhood? If we are, we'll be concerned about, well, the third house down doesn't go anywhere to church. Let's, let's invite them to church. More important than that, let's, let's talk to them about the Lord. Let's see where they stand. Let's, let's ask them the, the, the hardest question to ask is where do you stand for God? If, if I were to ask you today, and I ask you today, if I were to ask you today, why I should let you inside the gates of heaven if I were the gatekeeper and you were the, the gate, the gate, the, the person, the gate E, the person who wanted to get in, the person standing there. If you're the person standing there and I'm the gatekeeper, what do you call that guy, the gate E? Anyhow, if, if, if you getting into heaven depended on me letting you in, what, how, how could you convince me that you're ready to go? What would you say? I've heard it all. Well, I, I go to such and such church. Pastor, what's his name, church? He's a good guy. I'm glad you do. I put, I put money in the offering plate. Glad you do. Never miss. Glad you don't. I um, give to the poor. I help the mission. I, I, even, I even sponsor a Boy Scout troop, a guy told me one time. That, that's great news. But the, the only way you can get inside of heaven is to be able to answer the question, I have Jesus in my heart. Everything else is, is a failure. There's only one right answer. If you can't come up with that run, one right answer, you can't, go, can't enter the, the kingdom of heaven. 
Until man's heart is right, society will not be right. It will not be right. You can pass any law. You can, you can, you can pass a law that a black man and a white man move in together. But you can't make the, the black man and the white man get along together. It's got to be the heart. That's why you see the stuff on TV, people, people breaking out the windows downtown and doing this and that. It's not, it's not that one person's black and one person's white. It's that heart inside of us that, that's the same color that needs to be changed. It needs to be rearranged. It needs to be rewritten. Environment isn't the issue. Race, relations are not the issue. Goodness outweighing badness is not the issue. The issue is you must be born again. That's the issue. That's where we stand right now. You turn on any TV show you want to, and you can get the idea that we're supposed to change from the outside to the inside. My Bible says, and yours does too, if you have the right Bible, and you do, I know you do, that the change has to happen from the inside out. If it happens on the inside, the outside's going to look right. Well, he don't look very much like a Christian on the outside. We were, I, I've shared this with you hundreds of times probably. We were one time with a sports team from a school, and we stopped at McDonald's. The only reason we stopped at McDonald's is because McDonald's gave the bus drivers free eats. So we stopped at McDonald's on the way home, and there was a group of kids sitting around t a table over here, and they were, don't, don't, don't take this wrong. I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir here this morning, so they were pretty scruffy looking. They looked like they'd been without water for a while, and I don't mean drinking water. And I heard one of our kids say, and our kids look pretty good, but I heard one of our kids say, uh, I bet they don't know anything about God. And I just said, well, how, how do you know? How much do you know about God? You know, I can, I can look at Jess. I can look at Mary. I can look at Keith. I can look at Mike. I don't know why, but I could. I could look at Serena. And I could, I could make opinions of everybody in here. But God said, I, Preacher, you have, enough, you have enough to do worried about you than worried about me. And I said, it's not the outward appearance. What, what, what the Bible say God looks on? God looks on the heart. You start from the outside and work in, the inside never gets changed. You start from the inside and work out, and let God, the, the, the song says, just as I am, without one plea, but that thou blood was shed for me, and thou, that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. How are we supposed to come to God? We're supposed to clean up the outside first. We're supposed to get everything right first. We're supposed to, we're, we're supposed to put all bad things away and do all the changes and let, do all that. No, he said, you come to me, just don't, don't change a thing. You don't have to give up one friend. You, you folks listening in the nursing home, you don't have to give up one friend. You don't have to give up one, one uh, habit. You don't have to change anything at all. You just come to me and let me do the changing for you. I'll move, I'll, move, I'll move it from the inside out. I've seen scruffy old guys, and I'm not, I'm not using that as a, as a downplay to them. I've seen scruffy old guys come to church. I've seen them lay cigarettes on the, on the, on the, the altar. I've seen uh, one, one guy one time brought, a, brought a, um, a fifth of whiskey. I don't know what kind of whiskey. What kind of whiskey do you drink, brother? <laughs> I almost got him. No, I didn't. <laughs> Put that bottle of whiskey on the, on, the, on the altar. He said, that's it. I'm giving up. I'm not, I'm not going back to it again. He changed on the inside, and God's beginning to change the outside. You change the outside, you never do get to the inside. You never do. Because as good as our intentions are, what's, what's, the, what's the old saying? The pathway to destruction is led by good intentions. We mean to do the right thing, but we run out of en entropy. We mean to do the right thing, but we run out of uh, talent. We mean to do the right thing, but somebody ruffled my feathers and they looked at me wrong and I don't, I don't care for that too much anymore. 
And I don't think I'm going to do anything anymore. I'm just going to sit soaking sour. If, I, if they don't like it, I'll go out in the garden and eat worms. If they don't like that, I'll go somewhere, I'll do something else. What we need, what we need more, Miss Cortez, I know you're listening. What we need more than the Green New Deal is the old time religion. Amen. We need to bury it in our hearts. What we need more than anything else is that new birth inside of us that, that changes the inside out. You can, you, can fill, you can fill Congress with Republicans. You can fill Congress with conservatives. You can fill Congress with the best people in the United States of America and it still isn't going to change until our hearts change. Until we get things right with God. There's nothing wrong with Black Lives Matter or with this Antifa crowd, or what, what's this uh, white supremacy thing that's going on now? There's nothing wrong with that crowd at all that a new heart doesn't take care of. That, that heart transplant is what we need. By the way, while we're getting political, if Candace Owens ever runs for president, she's got my vote. I'll just mark it down right now. I just love Candace Owens. The problem is everybody wants a piece of the pie, but nobody wants the recipe to make it work. Nobody wants to work for it. Everybody wants to come in on the end. Now, I'll be honest with you, you don't want me making a pie and you, you wanting to eat it. I'd just soon eat your pie as, as eat my pie after I worked on it, but I'm willing to try it. If you're willing to eat it, I'm willing to try to make a pie this afternoon. If Congress would just do what this book says, if they'd start in Genesis and go to Revelation, if they would just do what the book says, we wouldn't need a Green New Deal. We'd have the good old deal. By the way, what we're talking about working in the government, it'll work in your life too. Maybe you're struggling this morning with something. Don't need to know what it is. You have a certain weight on you that nobody, need, nobody even knows what it is except your, for you maybe. You're under some kind of pressure. There's something going on. You need that miracle that the song said that you're ready to send our way. Maybe this morning you're so homesick for heaven. You know you're going to heaven. Salvation has been settled. It's all done. And you're so homesick for getting there that you're not doing anything that's here. The church house is full of needs. There's things that ha have to happen every, between Sunday and Sunday every week that we need your help. And you can do it. <laughs> I know you can do it. I've seen you do it. What works... What works for the government officials in making the, the United States better will work for you in making families better within the house, within the, uh, the structure of the church. In Sunday school, we've been talking about the, uh, the institutions of the, that, that have been ordained by God. And the one institution that's been ordained by God and talked about by God more than any other, any other institution in the Bible is the family. Because if the families are right, the church house is right. If the families are right, the government's right. You look back, you hear all these, you hear all these scandals going on. I mean, who, who can you trust? Just about the time you think you know someone, something comes out that's proven to be true. Well, not him. Yeah, him. How about her? Yes, her too. I guarantee you, out of all the people you can trust, you can trust the Lord every time. And that's who we need to pattern after. That's who we need to put in charge of our families. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning in the church house, in our families, in our government, wherever we might go, whatever we might do, that we would put God first in our lives. Maybe there's folks listening this morning at home. Maybe there's folks listening this morning in here. You, 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 need, a, you need a heart transplant. You've been in church all your life maybe. But now it's time to make sure that your heart is ready to meet the Lord. 
You couldn't, you couldn't answer that question. You didn't know how to answer the question whenever I asked you, why should I let you into heaven? We start to fumble around for words. There's only one right answer, friend. If you can't answer that, that, that question this morning, I have Jesus in my heart, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a chance. I would come just the way you are. Just the way you are. That's the way God wants you to come. And it's never going to be, be any easier to get right with God than it is right now because there's nobody here but us, us and God. Nobody here, nobody in here is going to think anything wrong with somebody getting right with God right now. If you can't remember a time in your life when you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, I beg you. I beg you. I'd come back and I'd do it for you if I could, but I can't. I beg you to give your heart to Jesus. It's just simply praying and asking Him to come into your heart. You don't have to, you don't have to give up anything. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to do anything different. Just come to Jesus and He'll take care of the rest. It's something like, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me and my soul. Take the sins away. Make my heart plastic and moldable for you. And thank you for taking away my sins and saving my soul in Jesus' name. With head still bowed and eyes still closed. Maybe you've settled that and it's done. Maybe you did it just now. Maybe you did it years and years and years ago. Now it's... Um, now it's getting right time with Jesus. It's time to quit playing church. It's time to quit playing Christian. It's time to quit looking good. Building the facade on the outside. It's time to stop masquerading as royalty. And live the life that God wants us to live. And do the things that God wants us to do. We're talking about with heads bowed and eyes still closed. We're talking about tough stuff here folks. I don't, I don't know if, if, we, if we even can imagine how close our country is to going down, the, going down the tubes right now. We know that it can't go any further than what the Bible says it's going to go. But where, where the Bible says it's going to go is pretty, pretty tragic. And I just soon in my lifetime see it continue the way it is, or the way it was. And we can change it here. But your heart has to be right. You need, that, you need that transplant. You need that injection of the Lord Jesus Christ into that heart of yours. And you'd say with heads bowed and eyes closed, you'd say, Preacher, just, just pray for me. I, I, I will not embarrass you, I promise you. Nobody's going to even see it. Just, just raise your hand and put it right back down. Just pray for me. I, I need some help this week. I need a miracle this week. Something's going to happen terrible this week to me. I know it's going to happen. I need that miracle sent down right now. Pray for me. I see that hand. Is there another? Is there another? All over the church house. It's getting right time with Jesus. Maybe before we leave this morning, you need to go to someone and you need to give them a big old bear hug and just tell them that you love them. That's, that's, that's all they need. Father, I pray that you would Cause us to live the kind of Christian life that you want us to live and be the kind of Christian people that you want us to be. Realizing that we're not, we're not talking about just making it till tomorrow. We're talking about eternal things. Things that are going to last forever. And if they're going to last forever, they may as well be right. The F Father, instill in us the one-two to do right and the one-two to go out into those highways, into those hedges into those buildings above the department stores downtown where nobody else will go. The cults will go there, but a Baptist going there? Sure, why not? Why not? Dear Heavenly Father, go with us now as we leave this place. Seal our decisions this week. Make us act on them. Cause us to be more diligent when it comes to talking to people about their, their soul and their, their future homes. Watch over us now is our prayer and our plea. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a safe, safe week. Um, Brother Mike, don't do anything dumb. <laughs>